Good day, grade 12s. Welcome to this next lesson on trigonometry. And actually, we're not just doing trigonometry today. We're going to move on to analytical geometry and we're going to do circles. Um, that's because someone actually requested it. So I'm very happy to be doing it. I'm quite excited. Um, OK, so what do we need to do? We need to first talk about the question. I'm not going to show you how, how you guys have to enroll, etc., etc. today. Moving straight on and we were actually working on this beautiful three dimensional question, 3D question, and we got as far as from what I remember, what did we do? We proved that cos theta was equal to x over x plus 3. Do you remember that? Um, how did we do that? Well, if you remember, we said that we used this triangle, 180 minus 2 theta, and we had this x and that 2x and that's x plus 3. And we used the cos rule and we proved that cos theta was x over x plus 3. Guys, if you've joined us only today and you missed that bit, feel free to watch the recording from Friday's lesson and you'll be able to see what we did. Now we're going to do the second part of this question, which says, um, oh, sorry, no, we determined the expression. No, we didn't. Okay, so now it says, give, if it is given that x equals 2, calculate a, b, the height of the piece of wood. Okay, so this is what we're on. We need to work out the height of the piece of wood given that x equals 2. But we know that this is cos a half theta. So cos a half theta is equal to, in this triangle here, Do you agree that cos a half theta is equal to the adjacent? Okay, never mind cos a half theta. I'm being crazy. Um, let's just look at this. So we've got a half theta. We've got the opposite side, which is the side that we want. And we've got the hypotenuse, okay, x plus 3. Okay, do you agree? So do you agree that I could say that this is the opposite side of the half theta? And why am I using the half theta? Because that's in the blue triangle and that's related to my AB, which is the height of the piece of wood. So I'm using that and then we've got the length of this AC, which is X plus 3. Okay, so I'm, and this is the hypotenuse, right? So therefore I can say, well, if we look at Sarkatoa, do you agree that we can say, well, um, hang on, let me just work this out. Do you agree that we can say that this is the opposite and this is not part new? So we can say sine. So we've got sine a half theta is equal to AB over the hypotenuse, which is x plus 3, okay, which is x plus 3. So therefore, we can say x plus 3 sine a half theta is equal to AB. Okay, so we've got that. Okay, what else do we have? We've got this and we've proven that cos theta is equal to x plus 3. Now, just bear with me for a minute. If I told you that you had cos 2 theta, do you agree that you could say, well, cos 2 theta is going to be cos squared theta plus sine squared theta or it would be 1 minus 2 sine squared theta or it would be 1 minus, sorry, 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Do you agree with that? Okay. But now what happens if I let, hang on a minute, let me show you. What happens if I let k, no, let's go be beta. Beta equals 2 theta. Okay, then what would I have? In this case, I would have cos beta is equal to cos squared a half beta plus sine squared a half beta, which is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared a half beta, which is 2 cos squared a half beta minus 1. So do you see the relationship of what I'm trying to prove? I'm trying to show you that if we've got a half theta, we can actually relate it back to cos of theta. So I'm actually going to do that. I am going to erase 
not all the ink. I'm going to erase this bit here. And I'm going to erase the two cos squared theta minus one. And I'm going to erase this bit here. And I'm going to erase this. And I'm going to say, what would happen if we let this equal theta? Then do you agree that this would be one minus two sine squared a half theta? Okay. So now I could actually solve this. I could say, well, we know that cos theta is one minus two sine squared a half theta, right? But this is sine a half theta. So do you agree that this is the square of that? Okay. So now I could say let's solve for sine squared theta. So if we do that, do you agree that we've got cos theta minus one is equal to minus two sine squared a half theta. So then I can divide both sides by minus two. And I can go, okay, well that's easy because now that cancels with that. And now to get sine of square sine of half theta, I can square it both sides. So I can go the square root of sine a half theta is the square root of cos theta minus one over negative two. Okay, so why am I doing this? Well, because they want us to calculate AB. And AB is equal to X plus three times all of this. But we also have that cos theta is all of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, fine. Now that I know that sine of half theta squared, sorry, squared, so that cancels with that. Sine of half theta is equal to this. I can now, and obviously you guys don't erase everything when you've done it, it's just that I obviously don't have space to write. So what I could do in place of this cos a half theta, I could write x plus 3 times by the square root of cos theta minus 1 all over negative 2 is equal to ab. Okay, everybody happy with that? But what's cos theta? Cos theta is x plus 3. We've proven it. So therefore, oh, I really wish these pages were bigger. Therefore, do you agree that I could actually write this as x plus 3 and then big square root? Cos theta is x over x plus 3 minus 1 all over minus 2 is equal to AB. Now we could make that all pretty, but we don't need to because they've told us that X equals two. So we can just substitute in. We can go two plus three square root of two over two plus three minus one all over negative two. Okay, and then that becomes two plus three is five square root of two over five minus one. So it's two over five minus one all over negative two. And that, I'm gonna put in my calculator. So let's pop out the calculator. Okay, and let's clear it. So it on first. So you've got five square root fraction, fraction two, two over five minus one all over negative two and then we equals it and we get square root 30 which is 2.74 so that there is 2.74 so therefore x equals 2 comma 74 and admittedly i know the square root can be positive and negative but we don't want a negative value okay because Sorry, we've just worked out. We haven't worked out X, we've worked out AB. We don't want a negative value because that is the length of something. Okay, we want a positive value. Right, so sure. Okay, so do you agree that question and that question was doable? That question there, that was a mini. That was nasty. Definitely a level four question. Okay, but it was doable. You could actually, okay, there was the trick. There was a trick of realizing that cos two theta is equal to one minus two sine squared theta and then halving both of those. But grade 12, you've now been shown the trick. Okay, so now that you've shown the trick, hopefully next time you come across something like this, you'll be able to see what to do and work it out. Okay, so let's talk.
talk circles. Okay, so we're not talking circle geometry now. We're talking about circles with respect to analytical geometry, okay? So, it says equation of a circle centered on origin, okay? And this formula is given to you on the formula sheet. It's x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Okay, so if it's on the centered on the origin, the radius is obviously this distance here. And all it's saying is that it doesn't matter where we are in the circle, that we can get the value of r squared by getting x squared plus y squared. It's really just using Pythagoras. That's all it's saying. It's saying that whatever we do, wherever we are, if we've got x squared plus y squared, we can get r squared using Pythagoras. Okay, so that is the equation of the circle center at the origin. So just to make sure that you guys can actually do this and to practice it, it says find the um, equation of a circle with center the origin passing through the point minus 5, 9. Okay, so all you have to do is substitute the values in to find r. Okay, well, r squared. So we got this is x and this is y. So we've got minus 5 squared plus 9 squared equals r squared. So minus 5 squared is going to be 25 plus 9 squared is 81 is equal to r squared. So then I obviously need my calculator. Sorry, you guys, and brain's not quite as fresh as it should be today. So let's go through it. So it's 25 plus 81 equals 106. So therefore, r squared equals 106. And that's it. You don't go further. You don't go around finding the square root of r, okay? No. If they ask you to find the radius, yes, fine. But now they've found the equation of the circle, they need the r squared. So the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to 106. Do not, do not go around finding the square root of this unless they ask you for the radius, okay? Right, next. Now it says, more importantly, since you're in metric, circles are center off the origin are x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. And again, this formula is on the formula sheet. And grade 12s, again, I have to have to stress to you guys that if you guys are working on maths and you don't have the formula sheet next to you, if you don't, if you know the formula off by heart and you're perfect, awesome, wonderful, fantastic, I'm very impressed, keep it up, okay? If not, you need that formula sheet next to you because it's your tool. You need to be using it, okay? Just like your calculator should be near you. You shouldn't have to dig for your calculator halfway through the sum. Your calculator should be near you. Your pen, your pencil, your ruler. Yes, your ruler. I know. I don't know what it is. And then your formula sheet. Okay, so now it says A, B is obviously the center of the circle and R is the radius of the circle. So, Let's do an example. It says, find the equation of a circle with center 3 minus 5 and passing through the point 1, 1. Okay, so this is a bit different. Normally, okay, we have x minus a plus y minus b squared is equal to r squared. And they tell us that a, b is the center of the circle. So our general equation, do you agree, is x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is equal to r squared. Okay. Now it says find the equation of the circle. Okay, so first of all, do you agree that this is obviously A and this is obviously B, right? So I can substitute that into here. So I've got X minus three or squared plus Y minus minus five squared equals R squared, okay? So you've got X minus three all squared plus Y minus times minus is a plus five all squared is equal to R squared. Okay, now what do we need to do? Remember that the general formula is x minus, oh there it is, x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. And what are the numbers that they're expecting? They want a, they want b, because that tells us where the center of the circle is. And we want to work out r, because that gives us our radius. If we know where the center of the circle is, and we know what the radius is, we know how to draw our circle. So those are the values we need. But we don't have the radius, but we do have a point. And this point was x, y. So we can substitute into here. Okay, so let's do that. We're going to go 1 minus 3, all squared, plus 1 plus 5, all squared, is equal to r squared. So 1 minus 3 is minus 2. So that's my, I'm doing this very slowly again, just to make sure you guys understand. Plus 1 plus 5 is 6 squared, 
equals r squared, minus 2 squared is 4, plus 36 is equal to r squared, therefore r squared is equal to 40. Leave it, do not square root it, you don't need to, okay? The reason I get so stressed about you guys square rooting is that I have so many students that square rooted to find the radius and then when they write out the formula they do this. They'll go um, x minus 3 squared plus y plus 5 squared is equal to and then because they worked out the radius they'll write square root 40 okay or whatever that is drives me insane because they've done everything right and then they've lost marks just because they did not realize or they just forgot that they actually want r squared in that final bit of the answer so please be careful of that and that's why i'm stressing it so much okay now it says determine the equation of a circle with center minus one two and radius square root six okay so this is really not that difficult we've got x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared is equal to r squared so the center of the circle this is a and this is b so it's going to be x minus minus one squared plus y minus two all squared is equal to the square root of six squared okay so that becomes x minus times the minus the plus one all squared plus y minus 2 all squared is equal to 6 and that's it nice and easy eh? why are we doing these examples just to make sure that you guys have got an idea of everything that you can possibly do all the different types of questions you can be given okay now we're getting to something that's a little bit more tricky not that much more tricky but a little bit trickier so let's go through it it says determine the equation of the circle with p is at minus 4, min, minus 4, 3, and m is 2, minus 2, and p, m is the diameter. Okay, so this is where circles get a little bit tricky and why I got, I think I got requested to do the circles. It's when it comes to this type of question and then when we get to tangents and then when it's all combined into a whole bunch of questions, which we are going to do, by the way. I've got some very nice exam paper questions to go through. Okay, so now, determine the equation of a circle with P minus 4, 3 and M2, 2, and it tells you that this is the diameter. So do you agree that if this was the center of the circle, oh, this was the center, let's pretend that that's the center of the circle. What do we know? We know that it's half the length of PM, okay, it's half the length of PM, and it's also the midpoint, the midpoint. So do you agree we could use, firstly we could use the midpoint equation or formula to find the actual center of the circle. And how does that work again? It is x1 plus x2 all over 2, y1 plus y2 all over 2. So let's do that. Let's use the midpoint to get, the midpoint equation or formula, to get the center of the circle. Okay, so let's call this one and this two. Again, it really doesn't matter. So we've got minus four plus two all over two. And we've got three plus minus two all over two. So that becomes minus four plus two is minus two. Minus two divided by two is minus one. Okay. 3 plus minus 2 is 1, so that's a half. And then guys, what I want you to do is look at it and see if it makes sense. This is saying that x is minus 1 and y is a half. Okay, so that is possible, x is minus 1, y is a half. That kind of is probably where the midpoint actually is. So yes, if you were getting a negative x value and a negative y value or vice versa or whatever, do you realize you could say, okay, fine, well, that's obviously wrong. Um, I need to do something else. So what they're saying is over here somewhere, there is a point at minus one, a half, that's my midpoint. And that's your center of your circle. So our center of our circle is minus one, a half. So do you agree my formula at the moment is going to look like this? X minus minus one squared plus Y minus a half squared is equal to R squared. Do you agree with that? Okay. Which can be made to look even prettier. It can be X minus times a minus is a plus. It's plus one all squared plus Y minus a half all squared is equal to R squared. 
Okay, now, now that we've found the center of the circle, what do we need? We need the radius. And, but what did they tell us? They told us that PM is the diameter, and we know the diameter is equal to twice the radius in length, okay? So do you agree that I can use my length formula and then dissolve it, okay? Well, in fact, in fact, sorry, I just read out something. Since I have that point there and this point here, I can just find the length of that, and that will give me the length of the radius. Or I could do those two. It really doesn't matter which ones I do. So I'm just going to do the two that I've pointed out now. So I'm going to call this point one and this point two in this case. So we're going to find, use the length formula, which says x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 or squared square rooted is equal to the length, okay, or distance, whatever the distance formula. That's fine. So we're going to square root it, and it becomes, and it doesn't really matter. So we're going to go, uh, we're going to go minus one, minus minus four squared plus y two is a half minus three or squared square rooted is going to be minus 1 minus times minus is a plus 4 all squared plus a half minus 3 is minus 2 and a half minus 2 and a half all squared at this point i'm very happy for you to put this in your calculator but just let's do this quickly that becomes minus 1 plus 4 is 3 3 squared is 9 plus Minus two and a half is minus five over two. So that becomes 25 over four. And this is all D, which is the same as what? It is the same as the radius. But do you see that this is the radius squared? So do you agree I can go R squared is equal to nine plus 25 over four. I don't need to go and square root it and then square it back again. All I'm doing is squaring both sides and that is a fatal mistake that a lot of students make okay so then all we need to do is add this so we go 9 plus fraction 25 over 4 equals and it becomes 61 over 4 which is useless to me so it becomes 15 and a quarter so that is 15 and a quarter so therefore my formula now is x plus 1 squared plus y minus a half squared is equal to 15 and a quarter. And that's it. That's the correct answer, okay? You don't have to go around square rooting things or squaring things or anything. Um, yeah. So, let's move on. Tangents to circles. A tangent to a circle is a line that touches a circle or that you can think it or that you can think it crosses the circle only once. Okay, the reason we mention that is because a lot of people seem to think that tangents only touch graphs once, but in fact, the theory is that everything crosses this graph, if it does touch the graph, twice. It's just it's got two equal points here, which makes it one, okay? So tangent is a straight line that just touches the circle. It only crosses it once or touches it once. Tangents are always perpendicular to the radius, always. It doesn't matter where this radius is. If there's a tangent, they are perpendicular. We should put it this way. It doesn't matter which where the tangent is, the radius is always perpendicular. So now it says, determine the equation of the tangent that touches the circle defined by this at the point minus two minus one. So I've kind of just dropped you in the bomb, haven't I? Because this is not in our circle formula at all. I mean, our circle formula is x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared is equal to r squared. So what the heck is that? And now we have to find the equation of a tangent and it's going through some point. So do you agree before we can do anything, we need to get this into this format. And what we need to do is we need to complete the square. And grade 12, this is one of the main reasons they teach you how to complete the square, okay? One of the main, main reasons. The other way is to find the equation for the turning, the, and the reason is to find the equation of the turning point of the parabola. 
Um, you know, y is equal to a x plus p squared plus q, something like that, or x minus p q a. That there, that p and q give you the turning point. Well, that that formula is derived using the completing the square. Okay, so now let us carry on with this. What happened? It just died. Um, sorry, it was an eraser and then it died. Okay, there we go. It's back to being an eraser. <laughs> Strange pen. Okay, right. So now let us have a look. I'm going to show you how to complete the square. So if you don't know how to complete the square, now is your time to learn. Okay, so we've got x squared minus 2x, leave a bit of space, bracket, plus y squared plus 4y, leave a little space, is equal to 5. Now, the way you complete the square is this, okay? You take whatever this is, okay, first of all, you always add, okay? You halve this and you square it. So you take 2 divided by 2 is 1, and then you square it. So you halve this and you square it. So it becomes 2 over 2 squared. Okay. Plus, and again, I'm going to just write it out again. It is you halve this and you square it. So it becomes 4 over 2 all squared. But what you do to the one side, you have to do to the other side. So do you see that over here we wrote 2 over 2 squared? So immediately 2 over 2 is what? It is 1. So that there is 1 plus 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. What you do to the one side, you have to do to the other side. Okay, and now this is the part that most people struggle on, so I want you to watch carefully. What you do is you take the square root of the first term, x. You take the sine, which is a minus, and you take the square root of this, which is 1, and you put it in brackets and you square it, okay? Plus, let's try this one, square root of that is y, whatever that sign is, plus. The square root of this is 4 divided by 2 is 2, so therefore it is just 2 squared, sorry I was just checking that I actually did this right, 5 plus 4 is 1 plus 9 is 10, okay. so. Now, do you agree that we have an equation that looks like a circle equation where the circle has a center of 1 minus 2 and the radius is root 10? The circle has a center of minus 1, 2, I mean 1 minus 2 and a radius of root 10. And just in case you're wondering what root 10 is about, let's find out. Root 10 is equal to this map. 1.16. So it's approximately just via bearing 3,16. Okay, so if I had to draw the circle now, just so we can see what's going on, do you agree that it's got a center at x is 1, y is minus 2? So there's the center of the circle, okay? It then has a radius of approximately 3,16, which means it is going to be going through. I don't know, something like this. And if you guys draw like I just did, I'm going to beat you up, okay? You cannot draw your graphs like that. I'm just doing this to give you an idea, okay? They then say that there's a tangent at x equals minus 2, y equals minus 1. So, therefore, we have a tangent at x equals 2, y equals minus 1. So, there's a tangent possibly over here. Okay, x is minus 2, minus 1. And they want to know the equation of this tangent. So, do you agree the center of the circle is at, what did I say? That was a, at x is 1. Oh, I'm so sorry. Let's try this again. Whee! And in fact, I'm not going to draw it so small. I'm going to write it, draw it nice and big here so we can see what we're doing. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so here we go. It tells us that the center of the circle is 1 minus 2, and x is 1, y is minus 2. So that's the center of the circle. Okay, the radius is approximately 3.16. Okay, so it's actually going to be something like 3.16. It's going to be like that. Okay. So the circle looks something like this. Okay, I'm guessing. I don't know. Okay, because I haven't drawn it. I haven't done it properly. Okay, 
And now what we're saying is that at the point x equals minus 2y equals minus 1, x equals minus 2y equals minus 1, there is a tangent. Now, of course, my tangent at this point in time looks like it's got a positive gradient, okay? And it probably does, but I'm not guaranteeing it because I'm just drawing this freehand to see what's going on. Okay, so do you agree this point here is 1 minus 2, and this point here is minus 2 minus 1. That's that point there, right? And what do we know about the angle between the tangent and the radius? Do you agree the angle between the tangent and the radius is 90 degrees, right? The angle between the tangent and the radius is 90 degrees. So if I find that gradient, then I will be able to get that gradient and I'll have that point because what? We're finding the equation of the tangent and the tangent is a straight line. So it's, therefore its formula is y is equal to mx plus c. So if I can find its gradient, okay, and I can use a point to find c, then I've got the equation. Okay, so let's do that. Let's get going. Let's go for a kind of orange. So can you see this? Let's try it. So points are m is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Actually, that's horrible. It's difficult to see. So let's go with this one, okay? So let's call this point 2 and this point 1. So we've got minus 2 minus minus 1 all over 1 minus minus 2. Minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. 1 minus minus 2 is 1 plus 2, which is 3. So this gradient here is minus a third, which means that this is right, because what do we do? We change it to a plus and we flip it. So the gradient of the tangent, the gradient of the tangent is equal to 3. Okay, what do we do? We flip it. So it becomes 3, and then we multiply it by a negative, so it becomes positive 3. Okay, so now we know the gradient of the tangent is 3. We have this point minus 2, minus 1, so do you agree we can get the y cut? And we're kind of expecting the y cut to be positive, do you agree? It looks like it could be a positive y cut. Let's have a look. So we've got y is equal to 3x plus c. Now we've got this point minus 2 minus 1. So you've got minus 1 is equal to 3 times minus 2 plus c. So minus 1 is equal to negative 6 plus c. So c is equal to 5. Therefore y is equal to 3x plus 5. Ta -da! Wow, that's actually a very nice question, don't you agree? It's actually a very, very nice question. So now you know how to complete the square. I will do more examples like this, so don't panic too much. And then what you guys can do is you can go look at the section um, just before, okay, when you start, it's actually, I think, in grade 11 work, um, where you look at factorizing trinomials then, and graphs, okay, parabolas, and finding the turning point formula. Then they show you how to complete the square. Okay, right. Right, an exam question. Okay, so let's get going. It says, and it's quite long. Okay, and we've got another one, but don't panic. If we don't get through both of these, then we can always carry on tomorrow. It says, in the diagram below, the circle centered on M24 passes through C minus 1, 2 and cuts the y-axis at E. Cuts the y-axis at E. Okay, right. The diameter is CMD, so I tell you this is the radius, okay? is drawn and ACB is a tangent. So we know immediately that that is a tangent. How nice is that? So therefore, that is 90 degrees. Now it says determine the equation of the circle in the formula x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. Okay, so first of all, do you agree we do have the center? It is 2, 4. So we can immediately go x minus 2 all squared plus y minus 4 all squared is equal to r squared. Woohoo! Now, we need to find the radius, but do you agree that that length there is the length of the radius, okay? Because that whole thing is diameter, therefore this to this has to be the 
radius, okay? So what are we going to do? Let's substitute in the value of this point into this and see what we get for r, okay? Um, no, let's not do that because that's going to be zero. What we're going to do is we're going to use a distance formula. So we're going to go, we know the distance formula says that d equals the square root of x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. Okay, so now we're going to use this point here and we're going to use this point here. And I'm going to call this point 1 and that point 2 just for fun. Okay, so it becomes minus 1 minus 2 all squared plus y2 is 2 minus 4 all squared. And I'm leaving it like that because we actually want the radius squared and this is going to give me the radius squared. So minus 1 minus 2 is 3 minus 3 all squared plus 2 minus 4 is minus 2 all squared. Minus 3 squared is 9 plus 2 squared is 4 which equals 13. So therefore r squared is 13. So the equation for this formula is x minus 2 all squared plus y minus 4 all squared is equal to 13. Aha! Uh -huh. Now they ask us to it says write down the coordinates of d. Just write them down. So before, in the yesteryear, they would ask you to calculate it and then it was really complicated because you had to do a combination of the length formula and the dist I mean the distance formula and the midpoint theorem and midpoint equation and everything. Nowadays they accept the fact that we can actually use logic. Okay, let me show you. Do you agree that to get from here, because this is the same line, it has the same gradient, right? So the gradient from here to here, this change in x has to be the same as that change in x ratio wise. And this change in y has to be the same as that change in y ratio wise. But it also has to be equal because this length here is equal to this length, okay, by Pythagoras. That means that delta y by delta x has to equal delta y by delta x, okay, the ratios. So do we have this? Okay, yes, we do. Let's go with the original one, which is 4 minus 2. Okay, so we've got y. 2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so this point is point 2 and this is point 1 in this case. So y2 is 4 minus y1, which is 2, over x2, which is 2, minus minus 1, which becomes 2 over 3. So the gradient of this line, the gradient is 2 over 3. I don't know why I'm writing this. Okay, so that is the gradient. But now, why was I working out the gradient? I was working out the gradient to prove to you guys that these gradients are the same because they're on a straight line, okay? But do you agree that since the gradient is the same, we can also use something else? And it's very cool. We know because the gradients are the same, in this case it's 2 over 3, that the change in y has to equal the change in y and the change in x has to equal the change in x if the hypotenuse is the same. In other words, we know that m is the midpoint. Therefore, we know that this line is equal to this line, which means this delta y has to equal that delta y. And this delta x has to equal this delta x, right? So if we do that, then do you agree that the change in x is what? We've gone from minus 1 to 2. So how many have we gone across? We've gone across 3. So if we go across 3, yeah, what do we end up? 2 plus 3 is 5. Similarly, if we go from the yeah to yeah, 2 plus 2 is Four. So if we add two up, we got six. So the coordinates of this are just five, six. Now that's all you had to do. I was just showing the gradients because I really wanted you to realize it's a straight line. And because it's a straight line, it's going to give you, you can use this theory, okay? Very quick and easy. Now it says determine the equation of AB, AB, AB in terms of Y equals MX plus C. Okay, so remember that AB is 
the tangent, and the tangent is 90 degrees. It's perpendicular to the radius of the diameter. Now, we've just worked out the gradient. Remember, we worked it out. We said that it was change in y, which is 4 over change in x is 3. So the gradient of this is 2 over 3. That's m. But now we want the gradient of the tangent. So do you agree that the gradient of the tangent is minus 1 over the gradient of the radius of the diameter? which is going to be minus 1 over 2 over 3, which is just 3 over 2. Okay, so now we know the gradient is 3 over 2, so we've got m. Now we want to find the equation, and we've got x is minus y is 2. So y is equal to 3 over 2x plus c. We've got minus 1, 2, right? So we can say 2 is equal to 3 over 2 minus 1 plus c. So we've got 2 is equal to minus 3 over 2 plus c. Therefore, 2 plus 3 over 2 is equal to c. That's not right. Oh, no. Oh, I know what I did wrong. Sorry. This gradient is going to be minus 3 over 2. Okay, let me just fix this. So there, that's where it goes wrong. That's where it goes wrong. That's where it goes wrong. So this gradient, okay, it's minus 1 over mr. So that becomes minus that, because it's minus that. If it's minus that, minus that. Okay, so minus times minus is a plus 3 over 2, okay, plus c. So do you agree that c is equal to a half? much better. There's the half. Okay, so therefore my formula is going to be y is equal to negative 3 over 2x plus a half. Right, grade 12s. Unfortunately, that's where we at at the moment. We've just worked out this equation here, equation AB. So what we'll do tomorrow is that we'll carry on with these circles and do a couple more examples and so on. Okay, I hope that you've learned a little bit more than you did already know or this is just reinforced what you already knew and please go practice, practice, practice. Have a wonderful day.